Hello, hello. I just got to find where you guys are on here. Look, we're not too late. That wasn't too bad. Just nine minutes. Where are you? There we are. Good afternoon, good afternoon, hello, hello. Yep, I'm just a couple minutes late. I had to get everything all situated. Here we are. Welcome everyone to the crafting chat. And of course, S'moresies needs me, so just talk among yourself for just a minute. I'll be right back. back I'm back I'm back okay close your eyes I'm gonna zoom in a little bit there we go oh satellite well someone yes yeah, someone will watch you okay welcome back everybody I'm just gonna close up this tub so I can put it down so the cats can visit if they want Better hide this. Whoa. I have a big black and yellow industrial tub from Sam's, and I'm just going to put it on the floor. But then I realized the cats will be able to climb on the tub and get to something I don't want them to get to. So I locked it in the bathroom for now. Hey, I think we are all set. How's everyone doing? Hello, everybody. Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted something to take notes. So if we're talking and we come up with a brilliant idea to make something for a video, I want to be able to write it down with a pen that works. I don't know, sometimes innocent can be boring. And overly troublemakers can be annoying, but oh gosh. You ever have the ups and downs where you sit down and you realize you need to get up to get something and then you sit down and then you realize you need to get up and get something? Hi Paula, welcome. Your name looks familiar. I feel like we've been in another live stream or video of someone else's. A cat bed? You want to make a cat bed as a tutorial? Is that what you want, Isabel? I can add that to my list. And then we were talking cross body bag with pockets for cell phone and money slash cards. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. So what I'm going to work on while we chat is, it was kind of funny because I kept counting these and I'm thinking that number is just really weird and it didn't dawn on me at first, but I'm making 52 of my scrappy note cards, which is the same number as a deck of cards. So all the bins that I emptied, I've put to good use. I stored all of my thingies in it. clear table but yeah same number as week in the year too it's just it was like 52 52 why is 52 sound so because when my brain is thinking one thing I didn't make the connections but yeah 52 weeks in a year 52 cards in a deck well I was gonna say 52 troublemakers but we're only at 22 right now Everyone is doing well. Let me see. So tell me what you guys are working on today. Are you guys just, just going to sit here and chat with us or are you going to work on a project? Yes, hit the like button. Thank you so much. So we put, I put up the last one of, of the sewing mat video. And then after that, we are going to be doing, oh, a string quilt. I was pulling out, I love string quilts. I was pulling out different leftover blocks from when I cleaned this area up and I just threw them all into a laundry basket. And I found some string blocks and stuff in there and a bunch of crumb blocks too. Sewing quilt row. Oh, so I was trying to figure out what a sewing quilt row was, and then I realized you're sewing the rows of your quilt together. American gatherings. Are you doing just, I don't know what American gatherings is. Does that mean you're doing like red, white, and blue? Another string quilt. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I love pinwheels, but those seams, even if you get them flattened in the center, they're just so hard to deal with. All right, what do I want to start with? Let me start with these. Yeah, sewing the row, well, almost done with the top. Now, since I'm a topper, so I've been told, that means I just like to make the quilt tops and I stop, that would be a finished project for me. Yeah, unfortunately, there are a lot of homeless. There's a lot of homeless here, too. And for the most part, our city just prefers to hide people. They don't want you to see. I have put all of my double stick tape on everything. So basically, we are, I am, I just like we because we're together. I'm just peeling and sticking today. Paula, I'm doing really good. Oh, the pool noodle loungers. Flag blocks, yes. I love, I don't have a pool, but those pool noodle loungers, you can see them every now and then like at the Dollar Tree or of course at like Walmart or whatever. Those are the coolest things because they've got the, they've got the fabric-y seat and then the pool noodles. So you sit in it like a chair, but it floats in the pool. I thought that is the best thing. Double thickness reversible hat. Oh, double thickness hat is going to be well appreciated if she's somewhere cold. I've decided since I love to make quilts, but quilts can be expensive when you're talking about backing fabric. I mean, you can make scraps for the whole top, but then you've got backing fabric and batting and all of that, that it's not feasible for me to just have them stacked up. It's, I'm not, I don't have the fanciest fabric, so it's not like mine are going to be high sell items in the shop. So I decided I'm going to make tote bags using quilt blocks. I think that's going to be the best option for me. That way I can still make the quilt blocks play with fabric and it's a small project that I can actually finish. 
make a full noodle seat soup, just check out the store and just pick one up. <laughs> I'm sure the one you make would last a lot longer and be better, but I don't know. I mean, I don't have a pool, so I, my first option would be to just pick one up at the store. But if I owned a pool, I would definitely want to make more. Everyone say hi to Daisy. She doesn't speak English, so me telling her this doesn't know. I just say Daisy. I'm sure she understands her name. Yeah, that's true. I really need to one need to make something like that for my bed because well, with the new air conditioner, knock on wood, it's actually comfortable in the house. The AC doesn't run hardly at all. It stays nice and cool, and I've actually had my quilt on my bed so far into the summer. But I think I would like to have a nice lightweight one with just the top sheet and the top, and then a sheet on the bottom. I have one quilt top somewhere that I know it's either in blocks or it's a top that I want to use. It's got like owls and nine patches. I just have to pull it all out. Well, I stopped going in the pool because I don't have one. I stopped going to the beach because I can't see the bottom and it's scary. Plus, it's really hot at the beach and it takes forever to get there and... Yeah, summer quilt. Yeah, I think that's what I need. I love my Halloween quilt for the winter. It works out really good for me, and it's nice and toasty warm. It hasn't been that cold lately. So I used to put two quilts on top when it got super cold, but it just hasn't been cold. It's been very sad. Well... I very pale skin, very light skin, and I fry. And I live in Florida in a very popular area. So when you go to the beach, you stand in the very hot water, which is usually like 90 degrees, elbow to elbow with other people, while scary things swim around down below you. And get this, okay, we were talking on the other live stream about Walmart. We had, people just drive me crazy. There was a shooting at Fort Myers Beach like Memorial Day or something like that. It, it's just, it's such a busy area. There's always so many little kids and stuff, but it's just crazy. I would like, I've always, I mean, I know lakes are worse than beaches. And if I had a nice little private area, I wouldn't mind spending a week at the beach in one of the little rentals or something like that that you can enjoy and have it by yourself. I, even at my age, I like to make sand castles and I do enjoy it. I just don't enjoy going through all the traffic to get there about 45 minutes and having all those people. And then there's, there's so much beach erosion and then you have, this is double stick tape. This is, this is, um, oh, this paper that you put in when you make your little scrapbooking paper. That's what it is, a thin scrapbooking paper. I have an eighth of an inch double stitch stick tape on it that I buy from Amazon. I'll show you what I get. They have it in the scrapbooking section that you can pay a lot of money for and just buy little rollers. But when I'm making 52 of these, I buy it. I've got the half inch on a roll and then I've got the eighth of an inch and they come on these rolls like that. And you can get a lot of them on Amazon. For, I don't remember what I paid, but it probably was only like 10 bucks or something like that. So it's very inexpensive. And it's a lot cheaper. Crafting has gotten so popular that if you can buy your supplies outside of the crafting areas, you can actually save money. And I'm all about saving money so I can buy more of what I want. But yeah, it's really crazy. And we don't have an off season anymore. It is busy year round here. It used to just be tourists would come down at certain times of the year and you'd have like the summer to yourself or part of the winter. You got snowbirds and everyone's here just all the time. It's very city-like. We, we don't look like Miami and of course we're not as big and busy but it has the same feeling.
I, I get on these runs, Carol. I just, sometimes I go crazy and I order a bunch of stuff and then I don't order anything for a while. And then I'll order a bunch of stuff. Our thrift store is down here because we have a lot of times when the people, the older people, we're talking 60s, 70s and above, when they leave the cold northern states and they come down to Florida, they sell all of their stuff up there and they donate to thrift stores, whatever's left. So what's down here is really like baby clothes. And if you go to the thrift store, I stood in the craft department in my thrift store, which is right next to the door where the employees come in and out. And as you donate stuff, the employees go through everything and pick out what they want and whatever's left gets out onto the shelves. Nope, this is just really thin paper. This is a thicker card stock. I have a video on how I did the cards. I think I put it on my last Whip It Wednesday video. These are my scrap fabrics that I put onto a lightweight fusible, stitch them down, and then I put the thin card stock on the back and then the double stick tape. It makes a really nice sturdy card, but each component of it isn't too bad. This stuff is, it was like a little small book. They were maybe five and a half, six and a half inch squares, so it just you just pull it out pull out each page as you need like um, sticky notes or something uh, yes we do we have the bad algae blooms down here Cape Coral isn't as bad because people complain about our city we have tons of rules and you have like unbelievable rules it's very controlled almost being in like one of those housing communities where you have to follow all the rules but it's not quite as bad so people complain but at the same time it's very I, I compare my city to like Harry Potter JK Rowling's planned out that entire series she's got everyone's history from way back and into the future any type of question you have she's already thought of it and planned it out my city was created back in the early 50s and they've planned for everything into the future now into 2021 so when a situation happens, they're able to jump on it and fix it. So we have these things called bubble curtains that they put into the canals along the river, and it keeps all the algae blooms out. But smaller places or places right on the water that don't have a choice, they are getting hit bad. Yeah, people, a lot of dead fish, they have like, they're having this like algae curtain or algae sheet or something out on the island, out in Mount Lache and Pine Island and stuff and it's killing all the fish down below and bringing it up. People are getting sick from it. Last year when they did all the testing, there's a lot of respiratory issues and it's really bad. I'm, I'm a little bit far enough away from the canals here and the canals that I'm near don't def necessarily go right out to the river, which then goes into the Gulf. So it's not as bad, but it's pretty bad. Yeah, garage sales do a little bit better here too. We haven't had garage sales in a bit, as you can imagine. So there's just not a lot. I mean, we have some thrift stores and sometimes like the Goodwill has switched over to mostly new things. So you don't see very much there either. So thrift stores in my area. Oh yeah. Thrift stores in my area aren't very good. It is so bad. People it's bad to go to the beach during like the red now red tide's always been bad but they have when they release the water from lake okeechobee and it, that and they're having all those algae blooms then it comes down here down our river hi terry i'm glad you can come out and hang out with us today And it comes down from our into our rivers where they release the water and it just gets so bad. They show the aerials from up above where all the beautiful, gorgeous beaches and you've got that aqua bluey green water and all of a sudden it starts coming in and you've got this brown sludge. It's we've lost a lot of money between the pandemic and then prior to that with all this nasty water stuff, people just aren't coming down to certain areas. I like to save as many craft supplies as I can, which becomes a problem 
and I don't like to throw things away because you just never know when you're going to need something. Like my kids' backpacks, they would blow out real early in the year, so I would take these little special sliding buckles and stuff and save those or those little clamps that you can pull, like on the mushroom pouches I did where you can pull them and it stops the drawstring. So I would save all of those things, and as soon as I throw something away, I always end up having to run up to the store and get it. You never know what you're gonna need. So I'm just using my seam ripper to pull off the tape. It's almost like taking it off for heat and bond. Sometimes it pops off really easy and sometimes it doesn't. I prepped a lot of these just in the last two, three days, so the tape is stuck down really nice and well, and I always exactly, Carol, Murphy's Law, and I always go ahead and push it down, so it works out really good. I thought once about getting one of those rollers, but you know what, my little Hera marker here works just as fine. I have that rainbow wooden press, but I'm afraid it would if any of the color would come off, so I don't want to worry about that. Yeah, our canals, we have a massive grid work of canals here in Cape Coral, and you can, in certain spots, you can walk across them. We got, in my area, we were getting, we've gotten over eight inches of rain this week, but it's not everywhere. Other areas have only gotten a half an inch in the same town, so they're having a really hard time. Yeah, winter is coming. You guys are on the on the other side. Cause Sass, she's got winter coming too, or is here. All right. So, what is your favorite season? I think my favorite season. I have two, but my favorite season is fall. But not, yes, Florida fall. But I love y'all's fall up north and stuff. And I love spring. I love seeing the new flowers popping up and everything like that. But I love the colder weather always love scarecrows and pumpkins and Halloween and apple picking. I never got to do any of that stuff. I moved 20 days into winter, yeah. I moved down here when I was 13 and I'm 52. So I've never driven in snow. We lived in upstate New York for a year and a half, but I never drove in it. So I really haven't seen a lot of the going on hay wagons. It's, it's all in my head and I'm sure I'm romanticizing it but I would love to just go across. Rob and I always talked about getting an RV and just traveling around the states the different times of the year to see the giant ball of twine and the biggest chair and to go to the pumpkin festival. I watch them Hallmark movies, them darn Hallmark movies. I just would love the little hometown. But then I talked to Sue Smith who lives in a little hometown and then I realized maybe a little hometown might not be the best for me. Maybe I want to live next to a little hometown because <laughs> little towns don't always have everything you need. And you may know all of your neighbors and you may be able to walk around the town, but you have to drive a distance to do anything. Which now, I guess at this point, uh, yes, and I'm 50, Paula, you nailed it. I forgot my own age. I have to sit and think sometimes, okay, how old am I? Not that I think like, oh, age doesn't matter. I just, how many times do you really have to say how old you are after a certain age? Summer, yes, summer is very hot. It is the weirdest thing right now. Hold on, I need a drink. Oy bay. When you have people not in Arizona over west and stuff and they're like 104 115 and yesterday it was 82 here in florida and i'm in southwest florida so i'm at the middle and just a little bit south of the middle of florida and we should be it won't be long and we're going to be up into the i think today is into the 90s feels like 100 so it gets pretty hot out there but the humidity has been very low it is weird. Now for me in Florida, so I I think nothing of you melting will, because a lot of times here it's still in the 70s and 60s and stuff. We haven't had a cold winter in several winters. But yeah, so those people that are, because we think here in the United States of Christmas with snowmen, piles of snow, snowball fights, 
and other you know the other side of the world and like in Australia and stuff they're going to the beach and their snowmen are made out of sand and I mean I wear shorts year-round here so yeah I don't have to go out very often and my time traveling is more about traffic than it is distance yeah it's just crazy Becky and I think it's only because if you grew up winter being cold and stuff like for me if I were to go there and it was a hot for Christmas I think nothing of it because it doesn't get cold here like that in Florida anyway I mean I'm knitting a sweater and I, I may never wear it there was many times in the last two winters that I've gone out just in a t-shirt and uh, I did wear jeans just because I wanted to wear jeans but it was still a little warm I feel like we're almost like we're not desert like but when you think about the desert where they dress in layers and you have to be a little bit warm in the morning and evenings and then you change over to shorts that's kind of how it gets here too once the sun comes up it gets warm and we don't have to yeah it's all what you're used to no you never have to wear they're really popular now all of a sudden the ugly Christmas sweaters It's hard to think about not living where I live because, I, like I said, I've been here since I was 13. So I'm coming up next year. It'll be 40 years that I've lived in Florida. Can't imagine. That little year and a half in upstate New York, I don't really count for much. That's like a vague memory. Oh, see, down here, I mean, the way I have always thought about it is you can only get so far naked. So if you're hot and you take off all your clothes and you're still hot, you're out of luck. But if you're somewhere cold and you buy, it's all about having the right stuff, the right stuff for crafting, the right clothes to wear. So if you're freezing cold and you're, if you're crazy and your daughter graduates from the Army in Oklahoma at the end of October, and you're wearing your Florida clothes it's a little bit cold over there but if you buy the proper clothes for your area I have an easier time warming up than I do cooling down it's a little better now since I'm past that old lady stage but yeah Arizona uh, Arizona is just crazy and you you have to have they have like Two air, two three air conditioners in the house, and everyone's on standby with backups in case of emergency. Because if you don't have AC over in Arizona, you're out of luck. It's bad here too. Mine went out in October last year when I got my new unit, and it was still burning hot here. It got way into the 90s inside the house. I think it was 96 one day, and they were talking about bringing an emergency unit in if they couldn't get the new AC in soon, and that was in mid to the end of October. It's crazy. Desert's hot. You can't go barefoot out on the pavement. I know that much for a fact because we can't do it here. I go check the mail. I walk on the grass or I make sure I throw on some slippers or something because you're going to burn the bottom of your feet. Ooh, Becky, that does sound like terrible. Oh, yeah, Carol, lose power for just a couple minutes, and you're just, yeah. It heats up super fast. Oops, oh, sorry about that banging noise if it's too loud. I might think I'm going to switch over and go to the next thing now. Let's make some cards. This time, I, when I thought about it, I made my back of my card a little bit longer than the front, so it's easier to open this way, where some of them are completely even, so you can't, you have to kind of get in there like that. I hadn't thought about it, and I should have, but then it just makes it so much easier to open it. Well, 
4%. Yeah, you have a very dry heat over there. Seuss weather, it's been crazy. It's so much hotter than mine, and the humidity's been higher and everything. But it's not very long, and we're getting up there in our temps now, too, so... August, September, it's, yeah, August is really bad. Plus, you also have, it's like when we get to a certain month, I'm just like, oh, it's October, it should be cool yet. Why is it still hot? Put one of these together just for fun. So I like to put this on first, and I have my tape here, so when it goes like this. Some people make their entire envelope and then put the lining in, and I started doing it that way, but then I thought, why? Yeah, I think if you live somewhere long enough, you love where you live, and you can't imagine. The kids and I, and Rob, of course, in the past, we've talked about moving many a times, and it just hasn't worked out for us, and now the kids and I are like, I don't know. I'm really kind of used to where we live and we know how things we know how things operate here we know how things happen in florida there we go well, crease the top and we have a card ta-da One. Yeah, the Northerners, they have some of the strangest weather in the winter, spring, autumn, year round. They'll have just this one temperature and then all of a sudden it'll be crazy going up or down. I watch Summers in Alaska here on YouTube and their temperatures have been hitting 80. Oh, you're crazy, Robin. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. And they're used to being, you know, 50 below and stuff like that. So when they get into the 70s, like 74 is the heat wave for them. It's crazy. Thank you. Move these out of the way. I just love sending these out, and I like to have plenty on hand since I was making them. And I thought, well, I don't know how long we're going to sit and chat because it takes... It takes quite a long time in several sessions. I create the scrappy part, and then I sew it down. And then you have to cut out the card, so I try to cut a lot of these out. You have to fold them, you have to cut out the envelopes. And when you do the envelopes, you have to punch four spots and score it, and then you've got to punch all the way around here. Then you put double-sided tape on every one, so it just takes a while to get them all done, but it's so worth it. Yeah, the romanticized winter and small town living. I grew up in small town living and I just miss it. Sue knows I'm not doing it. I don't do sew alongs. I am terrible at sew alongs. I never sew along. I get all excited and I start them and then I never finish. There's a lot of summer sew-alongs. Well, they do them year-round, but I've seen a lot of summer sew-alongs going on lately. Cross-stitch. I don't see too many embroidery ones. People, embroiderers, just seem to be lonely people. They're loan crafters. They do it on their own. I usually stand up when I'm doing this, so I hope they're not too crooked. If you get a crooked card, you know that I um, I made it today. <laughs> I don't feel like standing up and chatting. I want to sit down. Like, we're all sitting around my table together. Everyone's chatting. Well, no, I just, if it's a short-lived thing, then I don't mind doing a sew along with people. But if it's something that's going to last for a few months, I end up getting sidetracked. I've done a few of them in the past and stuff, but 
I like the 100 things in 100 days and stuff like that. I follow several people that do that on Instagram, especially with the scrappy stuff. I love to see what they're all creating with their scraps. But I just get sidetracked. I think it would be different if I didn't have YouTube. Before the YouTube channel, when you know my time was my own, even when I was working and raising the kids and stuff, I would be able to stay on track with stuff. But now... I get sidetracked with either chatting with comments or you have to figure out a video and do this in certain days on that. It's like having a real job. I am drinking. Hi, Morzy. Are you hungry, sweetie? You want a snack now? Come here. Smorzy, she's at that point where I don't know if she's getting better or she's not. You know, you're at that, it's like you should be getting better, so I think she is, but then I worry about every little thing and maybe she's not getting better. But I am drinking flavored water packets from Walmart in my Flamingo Nomi mug that I love. I have green tea in the refrigerator. I admit it's the powdered kind because it's just so much easier. It's already got lemon and sugar in it. Lemon and honey. Hi, Meg. Water. My, my water is flavored because I'm still on... Bye, Morzy. I'm still on the well system. Although going to the city water is not always going to be the best because there's so much chlorine and chemicals in it, but... They don't give us a choice. We don't have a choice. We're being switched over. Actually, next month is like my deadline. But the city has a special grant program for people that need a little help paying for everything to get the plumbers out. And they have their own plumbers, so I feel more comfortable that they're going to be certified and licensed and insured and stuff. They just haven't gotten their program up and running yet. And I'm sure it's going to be up and running after the deadline, of course. Yes, cold brew tea. We used to do sun tea, but it always had that, you could, it was too easy to get that funky taste to it and that little slimy stuff in it. So I switched this over to cold brew tea and it's just so good. Who's the one? Oh, brain's dead. The lady here on YouTube, she's doing the, she's doing the hexagons. I watch her all the time and I can't think of her. She's doing a hexagon a day or something like that with another uh, YouTube channel. I like watching her. I'd love to do a hexagon a day. They're doing it like the ones I did on Friday where you do the hexagon and then you sew it down to a quilt block. I might do a few of those and incorporate them into a tote bag. Yeah, and it doesn't get that weird settlement and stuff into it. Oh, I clear, well, my desk does stay pretty clean. This is like a dining room table that I purchased. And it, um, I usually have two sewing machines sitting here. And then back here I have some containers with pens and pencils, even though they're all hanging up and some crappy stuff. And then I have my cutting mat here. But I, I have to keep my area clean. Now that doesn't mean anywhere behind me is clean but my area has to be clean. You guys wanna see the tote bag I just finished yesterday? Too bad you're gonna see it anyway. I wanted to take, if you guys have been here in February, I made this applique block. We made these little nine patches to make coasters and stuff and mug rugs. I put mine together with this sashing and then applique a heart on it. So I did that. And then I took the, it was a Valentine's uh, fat quarter bundles. So I took some of the other strips I already had cut and I put them on the back. And of course it just goes all the way around and I took some of the leftovers and put them on the handles. And then I used some pink fabric on the inside. I put a little six inch pouch 
But I, I wanted the pouch to be scrappy, but then I decided I didn't want it. So I put the scrappy part on the inside. So there's a row of fabric there, and then some more there. And I just sewed a whole bunch of scraps together that way, and I stuck them on the inside of the pocket. Hi, Sophie. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. I, so I, you guys think, like, I started with, well, I started with a 17-inch square. It ended up being more like 16 and a half by 16. I don't know what the measurements are now. But I was thinking this looks like a pretty good size tote. I don't know if I want it to be much wider, but I think the tall wise is good. The hard part now is trying to figure out pricing. So this is 15 and a half inches wide and 13 inches tall. So it's nice and deep, you know, nice and tall. So I was thinking I want to make some that are a little bit wider and not quite as tall. And I, yeah, I think I want it to be a little bit wider. Thank you. So everything's all, I did a spiral, I did a heart echoed on the heart on the front. And then I did the side to side, the matchstick ones here. And then I just folded it up like you would a shopping bag. So I want to make some more of these for the shop and in variety of colors and using the scrap leftover bits from like quilt blocks that I have. I have so many quilt blocks that I never turned into quilts. And I thought I'll just make tote bags out of them. Hey Becky, are you done sewing your crossbody bag? Not like I'm rushing you. I don't know how far along you were when you got started. So that's, that's the next thing. Thank you, Carol. That's the next thing that's going to be going into the shop is someone keep working on tote bags like that. And I have all of these scrap fabrics there. I can't take a couple of the bins off the shelf now because they're so overfull that if I pull them off, all the scraps are going to fall on the floor. So I need to start making some things. So I thought I would do it similar to like that, the baskets I showed you guys how to do with the patchwork on it. So maybe stick with the theme. And, you know, they don't all have to be one color. That one was Valentine's, so I thought that was fun. I have some St. Patrick's Day fabric, and then, of course, you have Christmas and stuff. I don't want to go too much on, like, Christmas. Becky, thank you so much. You're very generous with your time. So are you, Sue. Any of the moderators, I think. Oh, there's Carol. Yep, Carol's blue. You guys are all so sweet to help us out. coming on here and chatting with you guys the back of my mind is like no Robin you have so much to do but then I tell you guys this all the time but then I get here and I'm like I just have so much fun it's very enjoyable I don't get to go to I watch other people's lives uh, when I can but I don't always get to chat anymore because I, I have like Becky you have to stop what you're doing to chat and stuff like that and I just miss out so I, I just listen and I don't get to chat Stitch in time. Welcome, welcome, representing Kenya. All right, I'll, I will 100% admit that geographic Kenya, that's South America, correct? So, is it summertime there still? Do you have like winter, winter? I watch a tribe of many, and I believe they talk about Kenya, unless I'm completely wrong. I'm, I can be easily wrong. I loved geography when I was in school, but once you stop like learning and paying attention to it, 